Uh, it's always great to see a tag trending worldwide because it means it has support all over the world. It's hard to get something trending worldwide and I didn't know that that was going to happen, but I just wanted everyone to feel like in the Shadow Hunters family fandom that they were part of a big family and that whatever, you know, their favorite character, their favorite, you know, couple, whether, you know, their favorite book, their favorite part of the TV show, that it did, you know, that all opinions are welcome and that everybody should be happy as part of the same group who shares a love of the same you know, material and who um, shares a love of the same magical world and it was really wonderful to see a trend like that. Uh, the Superfan meetup was fantastic. The surprise one, that was great because I love springing surprises on people. <laughs> Well, and I knew what was going to happen, that they were going to get to meet the cast and they were going to get to watch a bit of the show. Um, and they didn't, they just thought they were coming to New York to meet me. And so I was really excited for them. And in fact, it looks very uh, spontaneous, but we actually blew it like three or four times. I, I, I got in and was like, and now the cast is here! And they came running in and they sent them back out so we could do it again and again and again. So each time they had to keep being like, oh! They were very game about it. And they weren't real, they were super excited. It was just funny that we, you know, at the fourth or fifth time that they had to pretend to be really excited at that point, the cast was all laughing at them. And they were laughing, so it was very hard to keep everything controlled. <laughs> Uh, it was really fun to write the codex. It was based on this thing called the Bible, which is just all the bits and pieces and notes that I have around my house about, you know, timelines, different characters, their arcs, their favorite things, their hopes and dreams, the history of the Shadowhunters, how things started. So it was, I, my husband helped me. I, don't, I couldn't have done it otherwise. I, he's a great writer himself. And so it was his idea to kind of take the whole collation and turn it into something that's a guide for a new shadow hunter. So that you can read it and you can kind of feel like you're part of the world and you're learning all these things as part of your schoolwork. And um, I think our favorite part was probably writing in the margins as the character. So, you know, write, doodling little notes for Magnus and Simon and Alec, that was one, that was really fun. I love traveling. It's one of my favorite things. I mean, I never like to sit still for very long. Tour can be totally exhausting because you're working and traveling, but it's wonderful to meet readers in all different countries and get their different reactions and often um, the things that they love about the books or the way that they read or interpret them can be different depending on what country you're in and that's always super fascinating. And I do think it does affect the books because one of the things in you know that in the books is they're set all over the world and the characters travel a great deal and live a lot of different settings and I think that's probably because I'm always moving. Um, it's wonderful to know that people want to live in the Shadowhunter world because part of my inspiration for creating it was that when I was a kid, I mean, I mean like you know 13, whatever, I did travel a lot with my parents and so to me I always thought it would be wonderful if I could live in one of the worlds in these books because I was always reading and books were sort of my, my constant companions and so I had this very strong like imaginary idea that one day I would get to live in an imaginary book world. Um, it never did happen but I think that the closest thing that you can get to it is to create an wor imaginary world and the great thing is to have other people want to sort of live in it too because then you know you feel like you've created a real world. I guess I would say, all right, if I'm, if I'm doing three cents, I would say Lindy Midnight is a mystery thriller. It's also a hopefully heartbreaking romance, and it's also a book about family, which is really important to me. It's the story of this big black born family. And I guess I would say that um, if there's anything I can say about Lady Midnight, um, especially if you're fans of the show, um, we do we catch up with some of the characters from the Mortal Instruments appear in Lady Midnight, we kind of catch up with them and see where they're at, which I think is really interesting to kind of drop back in on these characters when they're in their mid-20s and they have jobs and some of them are getting married and some of them have kids and sort of see where, where they are. Um, and also I think that um, it carries forward the story that's sort of begun in the Mortal Instruments, which is, you know, essentially um, about these, these kids who are shadow hunters and it's this incredibly important thing to them, you know, it's incredibly important to Jason, to Alec, and to Isabel, and becomes important to Clary, um, to be shadow hunters, and to be a shadow hunter is to have this sort of noble mission to protect the world, but they come to discover that their government is corrupt. So what do you do when you have an essentially good purpose, but your government is kind of essentially bad? 
And that question is addressed in Mortal Instruments, but it's sort of carried forward through Dark Artifices. And um, because to me, there are all these villains, you know, you have your Valentines showing up and you have the, you know, Sebastian and you have Mortmain and the villain of the late of late midnight who I can't mention yet. But to me, the big villain has always been the plague. And the question has always been, when will all the shadow hunters join together and change the plague so that it's a good place? And um, so I think that for those who are interested in that part of the story of the mortal instruments, and that's also very featured heavily in Shadowhunters, that is definitely something that you'll find in Lady Midnight.